I moved here on a quest for affordable space. So I was in LA and finally I just said, you know, I'm done with the road rage, the craziness, the traffic. I'm just going to come to the desert and see what happens. So for the first two years I was here, I basically, you know, spent six to 16 hours a day, seven days a week working on this space. The good thing about these steel Quonset hut buildings is that they won't burn, rodents won't eat through it, there's zero maintenance, and they'll last, you know, a hundred years probably. Are we at a dead end here? Should we go, go nope, back around? No, no okay. Nope. <laughs> no dead ends here. <laughs> Only the beginning. <laughs> Wow, that's a great gate too. Oh, I love well, it. Well, these are actually, these panels were interlocking sections of billboards. And when I got them, they had anywhere from two to eight layers of billboard paper on them. So we had to scrape off layer by layer. So we recycle, I try to recycle everything. I bought the structures of the Quonset huts new. The first one, I got their end walls. After that, I made my own end walls. This is actually copper recycled from a local recycler. Put a standard garage door on it? Yeah. I got opaque glass, because if you're in here in the winter, it stays warmer. So it's like a giant soji screen, you know? <laughs> Letting in this really wonderful diffused light. Okay, I have to quickly open the door to this one to open the door to that one. I'm a carpenter by trade, and I do assemblage art. So I came out here basically on a quest for affordable space. Right now it's cluttered because we're storing theater seats and things because we had live performances and film screenings and things here. So the, the good thing about these steel Quonset hut buildings is that each one of these arches is a structural entity. So you don't need structural walls holding up the middle. It's huge. So yeah, no, it's so huge. Tough. Yeah, it's got 20, just under 21 foot ceilings. Because okay. okay. I, I wanted a loft, but I didn't want it to feel closed in. You should yeah. go up there and... Yeah. Because it's, uh, there is a surprise here. Okay, I'm sorry, okay, I just came out before you guys. <laughs> <laughs> this is a recycled rolling staircase that's OSHA approved to be a rolling staircase, but not approved to be a home staircase. But, you know, I figured, hey, rules are rules. If it works for this, it can work for that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You yeah. have enough space to loft a bedroom in here. Yeah, this is like uh, over 2,000 square feet. Jeez. And, you know, you could, you could have, you know, loft spaces on either side and still have space in the middle. How is this like your experience here? Oh, no, it's wonderful. Yes. <laughs> you know, when it's not this hot. Yeah. The arches, you can insulate with mm -hmm. this eco insulation. Yeah but it's super labor intensive. I've built not only these four, I've built close to 10 for other people in this high desert community. Originally, there were takeoff on a military Quonset hut kind of developed in World War I. You know, back then it was metal arches and pieces of steel, but it was all nuts and bolts. So in the military, you've got a thousand guys available and you can have them put these buildings together. You can use them and when you're moving or done, you can unbolt them, pack them up and take them with you. So they became, after World War II, they started using them mainly for you know, military, agriculture, industrial uses. At this time period, people are using them to build homes out of. Each, you put up your first arch and the next arch has this shape to it so it overlaps and waterproofs, you know, between them. And then the bolts that come through have a rubber washer that you tighten down so that makes each bolt head basically waterproof. Okay. 
You can do sometimes four to five arches in a day, but that's kind of pushing it from experience. We basically, you can erect like the shell of a 30 foot building in about a week once the base plates are attached. This is a metal base plate that has got a, a welded piece on the back that raises up. So this goes over it and it bolts to it. But eat, this is an, what they call an anchor bolt, a J bolt that goes down into the concrete. We're trying to get 30 feet of anchor bolts and there's one here, it, there's one every foot. So, you know, getting these precisely lined up is challenging, but I tend to overbuild everything because, you know, next time there's an earthquake, they're gonna change everything and new rules. So right. I try to be ahead of the game. <laughs> I actually installed all these beams and posts by myself with a hand crank genie lift. The beams, actually I got it at an auction at the military base and then treated them to kind of match the tone of the ones that are 100 years old using vinegar and rusty nails. Then you can take a brand new two by four and make it look 100 years old in a matter of minutes. <laughs> maybe accent and this is the best kitchen. Oh my gosh. So the back is part of the concert hut? Of the, or is no, the that's uh, some corrugated aluminum. And then all of this is sort of industrial? Yeah, restaurant, you know, stainless restaurant materials. These two stainless steel were medical cabinets from the military base. This looks like a piece of art. Actually, this material, which is the same as these walls, are the insides of solar hot water heating panels. I left the water connection on one, and then because it's really kind of wafer thin, I took a piece of ABS plastic pipe and created a crown molding out of it. And then this wacky door came from a wow. probably a restaurant, recycled restaurant office. door. Yeah, no, yeah. It's, it's really weird. <laughs> it was hydraulic and it would automatically stay shut and you'd, you'd push it and then you'd let go and it would really slowly soft. And then the hydraulics went bad and you'd push as hard as you could to get in, but then it would like slam and shake the walls. So I finally took the whole thing apart and just made it so it wouldn't like grab somebody's leg and break their ankle. But this is the bathroom. This was a restaurant dough mixing container. And then this is my, this is my night light. Thanks for Alan. <laughs> This is great. The tub? It was too expensive to get a stainless steel shower enclosure. So my friend had this tub sitting in his yard. So I talked him out of it and we threw it in here just so the inspector would sign off the whole building. And then, you know, I still, he, you know, he was just walked in and was wow. <laughs> you know, so he just like, where's the thing? Uh, So then over here, though I like so, how you, you can see the possibilities here with the glass. Yeah, with the yeah. plexiglass, yeah. yeah. I acquired the plexiglass, Lexan, and said, oh, well, let's, because it faces north, it doesn't get direct sunlight, so it won't yellow or age in time. So, you know, you just got to use materials efficiently, and, you know. You can do wonderful things with it. <laughs> it's amazing how the industrial look works so well with the, the landscape here. Yeah, you know, that's why I'm a fan of rust. <laughs> well, so here, this siding, which is metal, almost looks like a stone. It's so, yeah. so much Yeah, space. well, this I found at the recycler as well. And in 2006, there was a big fire up in Pioneer Town area. Well, this was probably somebody's beige painted metal outbuilding that burned up. The insurance company took sometimes up to a year before they'd settle and it would just sit out there in the rain. Once it got burned through, it would rust it. And this is the patina that it came with, wow. but it's never changed. So it's, it is what it is. And now this is kind of an outdoor dining room. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> These are just old tables. Mm -hmm. 
Well, at one point they had like a Formica top, but in the sun they finally started peeling up the edges and then one of them blew up in the wind and cracked and so I just peeled them off. Just, you know. So then over here, it keeps going. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you have another living room over here. Yeah. Do you like all the same materials? I mean, the airstream? Yeah, well, it just blended in with what's going on here. So it just kind of made sense, both architecturally and, you know, no maintenance. <laughs> So this little trailer is called Gitmo. It rips the paint off of the whole interior. It was originally painted this kind of olive green, and then somebody had it and decided they wanted it sky blue, so they took house paint and rollers, painted it, and every pop rivet was a drip. And I realized no matter what color I painted, it was gonna look horrible. So I stripped one little section and it was like oh this is too cool so i ended up i had to use chemical stripping 46 hours worth to strip the interior but i had to do it and now it's kind of like jules verne on the inside you know <laughs> it's like a submarine or something yeah i got a shipping container for storage uh, but I've just filled it up, and so I was at one point thinking I might make this the library, but I have to have an excess sale because I've accumulated so much, I really don't have the time or the desire to build more buildings. Yeah. This one's big. It's lower, so I didn't notice how big it was. Yeah, well, it's the same width as the big one, but not as high. It's five feet shorter, so it looks a little more squat and wider almost. Okay, yeah. Did you put this up? Oh, yeah. How did you do this? It's huge. How did you build this with just a help? These are huge. So yeah. I don't understand how two people you can... Well, I have this thing called a genie lift oh, oh, great. You that will that. raise 16 this? feet in the air. Yeah, it's, it's got, you know, it cranks and you lay the arch sideways on it and then you crank the thing. It's got little bars down there that raise the thing up and it'll, you can go up to, you know, where you can actually lift an arch above the one that's already there and drop it down on there. We basically, you can erect like the shell of a 30 foot building in, you know, about a week. This is your art shed? Yeah, this is my work shed. That's actually that thing that says art. I found it at the recycler. It had two-thirds of an M and it was a Walmart sign cut in half. And I stripped this thing, so I actually turned Walmart into art. <laughs> Done a lot of art pieces in the past using these antique wooden printing block letters. This is actually a 131 line poem by a Vietnam vet called First Tour. The bullet shells are representative of people who went to war. What? Was I in Vietnam? Yes, I was lucky. I came home. What was it like? I remember, I remember the cold, the rain, and how it intensified the horror of being alone. I remember relief, relief that the day had come, and the fear of no tomorrow. Older than most at 21, but less afraid, I boarded the plane for my first tour. On the bird, we all sat in a quiet, anxious, old separateness. My mind raced with visions of fireflights, friends, pain, girls, fear, laughter. Oh yeah, no, I love it. You know, I can't imagine living anywhere else. <laughs>